everyone, it's Floss. Welcome back to the channel. I'm now reviewing The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertelli. For those of you who don't know, and you should, I loved Becky Albertelli's debut, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. It was one of my favourite reads. It still is one of my favourite reads. I still recommend it to people. I'm like, if you just want to feel happy about the world, um, this is one of those great books. And she writes some beautifully charming, romantic um, banter and email and flirtation and family. And I just, yeah. You know, I have a review, I'll leave it in the links, but I just loved it so much. So it was really hard heading into this because I knew the expectations would be high, but also I was trying to like, don't do that to someone because it's really hard to say that, you know, your book is amazing, everything you do must be amazing. Did I love it? Yes, I did. The book is about Molly Pescanzuso and she's a twin. She's a larger girl. Her twin is a very charismatic, out there going. Molly is not so much. They go out one night and meet a group of people, including a girl that the twin Cassie connects with after Molly even says, I think she'd be a perfect girlfriend for you. And what then happens is you sort of start to see the divergence of Molly and Cassie, who have up until this very much point been super close, super connected. And this is sort of the first test of their adult relationship as adults in terms of they're 17 and they're growing up and they're getting to that stage where your sisters and your friends you change and that changes from outside forces and things like that um, her parents are two women and they're also it's around the time that in the u.s the u.s come on australia what are you doing the u.s legalized gay marriage nationally federally so that was that is an exciting element to that in terms of an uncertain life becomes certain for them in a way and while it's you know, they, th there's a happiness that they get from having their life validated, even though they were never seeking that. Uh, she also starts work at a thrift store, thrift kind of cool, funky hipster store. And there's a boy there who she sort of crushes on, but he's not normally who she would normally crush on. And Molly is a bit of a crush fiend. She sort of has lots of crushes. She remembers them specifically and explicitly. She remembers why she crushed on them. And so she's sort of battling with this all the way through where she's had all these very crushes that are very childlike or teenage-like. And this crush on this boy and another boy are competing against each other uh, feel more grown up and have consequences and does she actually take the leap and you know pursue the crush because for a while it's been from the safety of her crush where she can pretend not pretend but she can kind of be free of the choices and free of consequences because it's not about her it's about the boy so this whole story happens across a sort of summer um spring time in washington dc maryland i think it is and I loved it. It was beautiful. It was a lovely, gorgeous story. Um, Molly is a beautiful character. She's full of all those insecurities that 17 year olds are about adulthood growing apart. I really felt like the sister relationship. I sort of, I don't have a twin, but I have sisters and I know what that's like in terms of turning them turning into adults and how you, you pull against it and almost that you treat the person that you know you can break harsher than you would your friends. I identified with the other thing I really for me that book really spoke to me was that thing of liking someone who isn't conventional and when you're young you so want to fit in and so want to be cool and so you find well I did anyway I found myself developing crushes on people who actually probably weren't that cool and weren't that good but they were the conventional cool and good and so for me it was that battle of Everyone would know that I was, you know, like, if I had liked that boy and we got together, that would be normal and cool and whatever. Whereas the nerdy, funny banter boy over here, I wasn't seeing or I was disregarding because he wasn't deemed by everyone else to be cool. And so I really saw myself in that, in this book. Interestingly, and it's such a hard thing to do, do I compare it to Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda? I, I love Simon more, just a little bit. I know and it's so like they're not related books like there's a bit of a tiny connection that you get through um, the cousins but that's about it um, it's not like they're a sequel or anything like that you can read them in any order you like but for me Simon was just something really special something out of the box something I loved um, so while I loved The Upside of Unrequited and it's a beautiful read I would say it's like a four and a half star versus a five and a half star if that makes sense so I, Becky Abertelli is automatically an auto buy for me now forever. I still loved it. It was great. It was lovely. Definitely worth a read and yay.